Why don't, why, why don't we follow the old Well, in certain, in certain waves you do, there's just, I mean, it depends. It's too broad. I was just wondering, because I was reading in the book something about it, but if I come to you and I say, you're going to go into the world, and help people so what it, what it says is that Jesus did not come to abolish the law like the Old Testament law, but to fulfill it. What that means is there's a lot of different layers that like in a Bible study we could go over or whatever, a lot of which is discussed in, for example, the book of Hebrews, which is a great book, underrated. Um, but like, so a lot of people here will say, well, do you eat pork, for example, right? So that's kind of a, an obvious example. And I say, yes, I eat pork. Okay, and then they say, well, the Bible says you shouldn't eat pork. And I say, what does it say that I shouldn't eat pork? So what happens is you see that in the, in the book of Leviticus, when there's the command not to eat pork, that's a book directed with laws for specific, like, community laws for the Hebrew community of that time. Certain laws of which are ratified in other parts of Scripture, certain ones of which have to do with ceremonial purity, like for worshiping in the temple or whatever. Like, so if you ate pork, you couldn't go to the temple and, like, go inside, which is a bad deal. Like, you couldn't sacrifice your goat or whatever, you know. But now... Uh, for example, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how the sacrifices of the temple are not a thing anymore because the final sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, on the cross is the fulfillment. It's like way, it's the best of all of those sacrifices. It's so, so good that no other sacrifice is needed. Hopefully that kind of made some sense. Yeah, totally. Totally. Can I just say that I believe that a million percent? Like no matter how much I did for that church, I got hit that card. I, if it, if it, like I don't, I don't matter, okay? But I do want to tell you that, like, so several times today, for example, to this girl here, like I've apologized for the behavior of other Christians, and that just sucks. Like what happened? Like what happened to you? You know, and thankfully, I mean. Like, thankfully, some, you know, priest didn't, like, abuse you over the course of years or whatever. Or maybe they did. I don't know. But anyway, you're talking about the pastor. That sucks. That's not what he's supposed to do. And I'm not here to preach any, like, church. Some guy earlier said, like, what about your church corporation? I'm not part of a church corporation. I think it's all bunk and garbage. And I often, even though I don't matter, on Sundays, what I usually do is go outside church corporations with signs similar to this. Um, a lot of the time, they have to do with, like, the ab abortion holocaust, which I believe to be a terrible injustice. I mean, people, like, literally... They find like the gay gene or what they think is the gay gene in the in the child and they're like, cool, I'm gonna abort that child because I don't want my kid to be gay. Like it's this holocaust against the gay people as well. It's this terrible thing. Anyway, so like I'm like, hey Christians, could we, I don't know, love our pre-war neighbors or something? I think the same symptom exhibited itself with you, if I may be so bold, like this guy's part of a machine, it's his job. He went to college, you know, in seminary, which is grad school for ministry, I like to call it the ministry industrial complex. You ever heard of the, like, the military, military industrial complex? Similar thing. I mean, you can see it. Like, the evangelical churches, it's this company, it's a business, right? They want money, they want influence, they want butts in seats. Yeah. I think, I, I mean, Joel Osteen is just, like, hot garbage. I think, however, that there are many Joel Osteens around, even in, like, this city. They're just not as popular, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, if I, I mean, for whatever it's worth, like, I just affirm that that sucks so much. And I'm not here to tell anybody to go to church, because I think going to church on Sunday is, like, a waste of time. I'm just here to talk about following Jesus. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think, I don't think, I wouldn't agree with that statement as it's said. But so, I got a friend who has, like, gay attraction, okay? Um, and I would say that it's similar to me, like, I have attraction for, toward cowardice, lying, thieving, selfishness, right? Like, these are things that, these are things that, like, my flesh wants to make me do, take me away from Jesus, okay? And, like, so that I offend Jesus all the time, right? I think that that's, I think that's how a homosexual desire is. I think I was born with, like, these tendencies to cowardice, for example, right? Okay? And so, like, it's, what I want to do is, like, follow Jesus and kill that cowardice in me. In the same way, like, I think it's certainly plausible that people are born with like homosexual tendencies or desires or whatever and I'm just saying like you know instead of like indulging those desires Jesus wants to help us overcome them I don't know if they'll go away or whatever like it seems to vary your mileage may vary but what I what I am saying is that like Jesus wants to forgive us of that and of any like homosexual encounter we've ever had in the past 
because he died on the cross already to take that sin away. And he wants to give you liberation, like, and help you live a holy life, free of, like, like you know, killing the sin, constantly a struggle, kill your sin, of whatever it is, you know? So it's not like being gay is some kind of special thing. Can I, if I can tell you a little thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to land that jump, but... Ah. Okay. Anyway, I think that, like, a lot of the hullabaloo surrounding, like, the LGBTQ agenda and all that kind of stuff, people talk about that. A lot of the time, I think it's like the, it's like these church people who um, who are afraid that the government will make them marry gay people in their church, and they'll like lose money. And I'm just like, you know what you could do is just like not marry people because it's not your job. Like, what are you going to create a you're going to create a marriage? The Bible says God makes that. Okay, so I know it's a, like a little bit of a, a different angle, but like hopefully it intrigues a little bit. And I just think that a lot of the complaint about that is people are afraid that that'll come down the pike and it'll like force them to lose money or whatever. And I think it's a, a sham. Does that make sense? I don't, um, like you, you're talking, I'm doing this I wrong. Appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even if I yeah, I hear you. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. For sure. I mean, your demeanor is totally commendable. I appreciate you. Yeah. I think, I think, I honestly think we have, like, there have been, and I, and I believe one of the most effective, effective, if you'll pardon the expression, but, like, one of the things that I've really seen is, like, touch the hearts, is I believe that a lot of people out here have been treated bad by, like, church people, you know, and, like, me as somebody who is, like, on the outside of that whole comp ministry, industrial complex, the business, the industry, I think that it puts me in a position to see the rot and the, the corruption inside, and to be like, I totally believe you. You know, you say your pastor abused you for 10 years. I believe you, a million percent, you know? And you say that, like, or, yeah. I mean, somebody's telling me that, like, a, yeah, yeah, no, t totally, totally, they are. And, I mean, it's, people will say, like, you know, an atheist or other, like, uh, non-Christians or whatever will be like, uh, you know, here you are building this huge building with all these spires and, you know, like, prettiness, and there are people going hungry in your city. I'm like, it's totally fair. I mean, can we, can we not build towers to serve no functional purpose, right? Like, what's the point of that? What's the point of a bell? What's the point of a pipe organ? Like, these things make no sense. I like that you go out and put the people down. That is perfectly fun because, honestly, we're going to go to the world and we're going to continue to do this. And then there's people out there that dare not reach. I love you. I'm going to push this. Because they're either too afraid or they just don't want to put their stuff down to these people. Yeah. And honestly, I have no problem with it. I don't have, I'm not against anything. I mean, you're, you're, you're so respectful and it's just so much appreciated. I I think the main message that I would bring and that I have been bringing, like, I understand that it looks totally like a protest. I get it. Okay. And I, but I really don't see myself as protesting. I go out to all kinds of gatherings of, like, large gatherings of people, whatever. And, like, I preach the gospel, like, Thunder Games, like, you're, you're football not, Games. I don't, that's right, I don't see myself as doing that. Um, I think that pushing, like, I know that there are people who push, and it's at the point of sore. Let's see, I was, I was actually over there earlier. Okay, so you weren't part of that little group that No, I didn't see them. Yeah, I think that they came from Westboro. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Because you're, you're too respectful, you wouldn't have been able to watch Yeah, when I, when I meet those guys, I rebuke them. Um, well, that's what we were saying, like, I mean, yeah, you heard all the churches and the, and the parade and stuff, which is cool. I mean, it's cool that they're supportive. But then you have him calling, one of them guys calling him and he's a street preacher and all this stuff. Is that what the street preacher guy said? Yeah. To the, that's really that's really interesting choice of behavior. Okay. Well, that's what I was calling him out for. Uh -huh. You're supposed to be preaching different than the way you are right now. Right now you're being paid. Yeah. And there's no call because he's doing the same thing you're doing just in a probably a lot better way. Yeah, like it, I mean, there's, I can tell you this, it's like easy to cross the line or whatever um, in this kind of context because there's all this emotion and whatnot. And I think that God gives us grace to generally avoid like spite. You know, it may sound sometimes like a harsh message or whatever, but I truly, like, I don't think any of us truly mean 
Um, even if even if sometimes we might lose our temper a little bit, which I think most mostly we've done a pretty good job today. Yeah, I would. But like we don't hate. You know. Yeah, he's, he's like, oh, gay people are icky. And right? I'm like, I hope. And the streamers from the parade get all in his face. I was like, I'm trying to make fun Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, people ask why we're here. It's like, hey, it's not, I, don't, I don't think gay people are icky. You know? Like, I hate my sin, too. You know? I'm just try, I'm trying to be consistent and, like, bring the same message to everybody that I bring to myself. You know? I wouldn't want to, um, be, to get to a place in my, like, my own life kind of my own convictions and internal thought processes where I'm justifying evil behavior, right? So the question is like, what's evil behavior, right? But like just in principle, like I don't want to do that, you know? And so, and I also think that um, the, the, the arguments from the Bible are like pretty much set in stone that like to engage in homosexual behavior is sin and it does lead to death. And because I love, like I want to make sure that that is known and I want to offer people kind of a... I want to pe offer people the, the grace of Jesus to forgive those past acts. And, and so to be fair, like, that's that's what I would offer to you as well. Like, Jesus forgives sinners. I, was gonna say, you know? I don't feel like you hate anyone. I don't feel like you're going to come at them the wrong way. You're just kind of like, hey, here's what I'm going to tell you whether you listen or not. And so I probably do. You know, if, if they engage back with anyone that's talking, they're listening or they don't yeah. engage. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, not all the time, but, you know, it's a, maybe the 80-20 rule. Who knows? You know, you've heard of that, right? Yeah, 80-20 rule. It's probably, it might be a little less, but like, I get it's kind of like the mob group thing, you know, how people get all riled up and whatnot, but it's kind of goes with the territory, but. I commend you for it. It's just because I love, like, I love you. I love you. May I know your names, by the way? Would that be okay? My name's Alan. My name's Josh. Josh. I shake your hand. Josh? Seth. Seth? God bless you guys. So yeah, my name's Alan. All four, four, four letter names, four letter words for our names. There you go. Yeah. Hey, absolutely. I, I appreciate you very much. And um, would you mind if I gave you a little, like, a little pamphlet that I pass out? That'd be okay. Thanks. self-righteous jerk pharisee hypocrites you know in church clothes in church buildings and stuff with church titles so i get that and i wish it could be different i think that this is a step to getting there you know like it's not you, you can't go from a to like point a to point z but you can try to do some things you know and that's like i really think that we're trying to do that in many ways we could i'm sure we could learn to do better as well and improve um it reminds me of what you said about like this you know the union valley guy it's like there's another kind of famous Baptist preacher guy um, who made, made a name for himself on YouTube. And uh, he got interviewed by the BBC. And um, one of the things they said during the interview was like, so what would be your message, Pastor Anderson, toward gay people? Like, what should they do? And he's like, well, I think they should kill themselves. I'm like, are you freaking serious right now? They should kill themselves? What the hell is wrong with Like, that dude is a servant of the devil for real. Like, I mean, you know, take all the drag queen or whatever you want here. Like, I would rather get with that person them, that guy. Because uh, that's just, that's straight up wicked. Like, It's horrible. It's so horrible. You'd expect a guy who's like, we preach the Bible. Like, I was hoping he'd say, well, I think that they, and this, cause this is what I would say. Like, to be fair, I, I think that they should repent, turn their backs, turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. Like, because Jesus Christ has taken away sin for those repent. Like, that's what I am preaching. So I hope that he would do. But no, nah, he's like, no, nah, they should kill themselves. Like, oh, man. We have a good time. And I mean, I would rather have everyone here be doing something like this than be out with drugs or stealing or doing anything like that. By all means. Yeah, I think 
you know, if you, you know, you said that you, you're doing this now and it's helping you with your life and your issues, right? Yeah, I would tell you in a way it is, yeah. Like, for example, it, good, it helps me, like, the, the fear of man, you know? Because, like, 20, 25 years ago or whatever, if I kind of continued on that path, then fast forward to my age now, 41. So, like, I meet somebody like you, and you're like, yeah, I have honest questions. You know, but, like, the bitterness in my heart and kind of the darkness and the fear, man, and stuff's growing up. And, like, that's going to grow into a crop. And I'm just not going to, like, talk to you, you know? I'm not going to... I'm not going to have a message of hope to share with anybody. I don't have anything good to say to anybody. I don't have love for other people. I'm not putting myself out there to like come into contact with somebody who might disagree with me, right? Like, so that I can show love of Jesus to them at all. Well, it's good, you know, it's good that people revive. It is, because then that's whenever questions can be asked back and forth. If they're saying something that's not true, that you can tell them that that's not true and explain how it's true. Right. And it can go back and forth, and people just listen for it. Like, this conversation should be taking place everywhere, not people screaming back and forth. It just it doesn't bother you. Like, it just yeah. pisses people off. It's really hard. I think, I, I, to be honest, like, sometimes we fall kind of into that temptation. And it becomes like a contest of wits, you know? Yeah, people throw battle It's a bad move. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a bad move. And I'm, I'm going to try to learn from, like, even to the extent to which I fell into that temptation myself today, you know, which was, which was not zero. Uh, you know, I want to try to learn from that and do better myself too, like sure. next time. Um, I mean, I think pretty much everybody here has fallen into that temptation when it comes to yeah. religion in general. Like people, it's like you are out here preaching and stuff. You're not really preaching, but you're just saying what needs to be said. Yeah, I mean, I was preaching earlier. And then people you know. come at you. So, I mean, if people come at you, I know it's wrong, but you have the right to come back. But you, like you said, you can come back in a different way. Not like full force in their face. Some yeah. Deserve it. Some deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says, "Bless." Like when people curse you, bless. You know what I'm saying? So, and hey, when people bless you, like you guys, okay, I bless you. them even more. We're gonna head off. Yeah. God bless you guys. I'll, I'll be praying for you guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.